Hello and welcome to the video where we're going to be making a mould of a zombie sculpture that I sculpted up previously. Now the intro probably made this look a little bit more exciting than it's actually going to be, but if you are thinking of making a mould for your own sculpture then hopefully this will be useful. Now as you can see here I've got some help from Lola who's going to be helping out throughout the video and what I'm going to be doing here is taking the sculpture and suspending it effectively above this piece of wood and then I'm going to build a clay wall around the sculpture. So the first step is to cut some foam board to size to help me position the sculpture. I'm just doing that by hot gluing everything together. I'm also going to be using water-based clay to build the clay wall around the sculpture. So I am putting a layer of cling film over it just to make sure that the model doesn't get too messy. So what I've actually decided to do here is to lay the model face down. So I've just taped some bubble wrap to the front of the sculpture so it doesn't get damaged when it's lying down. I'm now just adding a few other pieces of foam board to the sculpture to help hold it in place. Now what I need is a platform around the sculpture. So as you can see here, I've drawn around the sculpture onto a piece of foam board and cut out that impression. And I'm now gonna glue that piece of foam board around the sculpture. This is just gonna give me a platform that I can add my clay to. So you can see I'm just slowly building up the clay wall here um, and as I mentioned this is just water based clay so it's just a sort of standard art clay you can get from most art shops. Now this clay is going to form the edge of where the silicon moulds meet basically so what I'm trying to do is make it match the contours of the body and smooth out as much as possible. Now an easy way I've found to do that is to use some water and a paintbrush to smooth down the edges of the clay. Because the monster clay is an oil based clay and I'm using water based clay for the wall, uh, the two words interact so it's easy for me to smooth it down with water and if clay gets onto the sculpture I can easily brush it away just with a paintbrush and some water. It's a bit of a slow methodical process here, but it really does pay to pay attention to where the edge of the mould is going to lie. So I've made an effort to have the edge around the edges of the ears and coming down the edge of the neck and over the shoulders. There's always going to be a bit of a seam line when you put a mould together, but if you can uh, minimise that as much as possible, it really does help uh, for the final piece. So I'm just taking a lot of care here to make sure that the edge meets the contours of the mould. So that's how the wall is going to fit in. And as you can see here, I'm now cutting a channel around the sculpture. This is just so when the casting material is poured into the mold, there's a seal around the edge of the sculpture to stop the casting material leaking out. So there's my second foam core wall going up. I really do need to stress that you do need to make sure that you make the surround of the uh, mould watertight effectively. So I always use lots and lots of hot glue to seal in any potential leaks. It's sometimes easy to underestimate the amount of pressure that the all of the mould actually takes. So it really does pay dividends to make sure that's as strong as you can make it. Right, so there's my mould almost finished. Um, and you might be able to see that I've made some large teeth around the edge of the mould. That's just to help the mould line up once the two halves of the mould are poured. So the teeth will just uh, meet together and there won't be any other way for the mould to come together. As you can also see here, I'm just cutting in some additional keys. These really serve the same purpose, just to make sure that there can't be any misalignment between the two halves of the mould. Right, so there's the clay wall finished and the surround all glued in. So I've now taken some silicon rubber and I've uh, measured it out in uh, batches of 400ml and poured them into this large tub. So what I've actually got here is 1200ml. I'm now adding some catalysts and uh, stirring it all together. <laughs> 
I've mentioned in previous videos the problem of getting air mixed up in your mould. This is from a previous video and as you can see it's a time lapse of the silicon just um, sitting and degassing on its own and it's surprising how much air actually comes out of the rubber. This is introduced when you mix the silicon up. And the problem is that if some of these air bubbles get onto the surface of your mould you can get a distorted cast with bubbles on the surface of the cast where you don't want them. So obviously that's not desirable. Um, here's a cut section of a mould that I've made previously that I didn't degas. And as you can see there's lots and lots of cavities inside the mould. So this is a bit of a problem. So a way around it is to use a vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber to suck the air out of the rubber before it cures. Now they're not the cheapest of items but they're not hugely expensive either so I do recommend getting one if you can as it really does improve the quality of your moulds. So as you can see as the pressure drops you can see the air in the silicon here being pulled out and that causes the rubber to foam up. It's sort of analogous to opening a coke can. And as you can see here, the uh, silicon's sort of gone a bit demonic and um, all of the air's finally pulled out and the silicon's collapsed. And just to prove a little physics point here, at the minute there's a uh, lower pressure in the chamber than there is in the outside environment. So if I try and pull the lid off, you can see the entire thing comes up. And that's because of the pressure of the air outside pushing in on the container. But if I now lower the pressure, you see that slowly coming down. I, I found that it's easier to let the pressure down slowly. If you just open the valve completely, the air rushes in and causes silicon to blast all over the interior of the chamber. So that's why the lid of the pot isn't quite as see through as it was previously. Right, so now the pressure's gone. So if I try and take the lid off, it just comes straight off. So uh, maybe that's obvious, I don't know, but I do find it interesting just to see some physics in action. Right, so there's my silicon now, fully degassed, and it's got a nice uh, smooth finish to it. So I'm just pouring that into the mould. Right, so there's my silicon poured in, but as you can see, some of the sculpture is still sticking out of the uh, silicon, so the level of the silicon is a little bit too low. So what I'm going to do here is use a technique I've used previously, and that's to use pieces of a mould that I've made previously that I don't need anymore, and just push them into the rubber. Because silicon will only stick to silicon, they'll join with the rubber as it dries. This is just quite a good way of reusing old moulds that you don't need. And because silicon's quite expensive, um, this is quite a good way of saving yourself some money as well. Right, so there's the first half of my mould finished. One very important step here is to stab yourself in the thumb with a standing knife. Um, <laughs> bit of an occupational hazard, unfortunately, but um, I am prone to it. Most of my models have some degree of blood in them at some stage. So now it's just a question of pu pulling away the uh, bits of foam core that were holding the sculpture in place. As you can see, we've had a little bit of a leakage here. It looks like some silicon's made its way down to the underside of the mould, which does occasionally happen. Just carefully peel that away so we don't damage the sculpture. So now I've got to get rid of this uh, clay wall and I've got to do it in such a way that I don't damage the sculpture. Um, you can imagine that if you start trying to scrape this away on the edges with a sculpting tool you run the risk of accidentally stabbing the sculpture and creating impressions in the sculpture that weren't there previously. So that if, you, if you're not careful you can end up with quite a pronounced mould line where you've scraped the sculpture as you pull the clay away. However, as I mentioned, this is water-based clay, so one thing you can do is to run the sculpture under the tap and use a paintbrush to slowly brush the clay away. As the clay becomes waterlogged, it sort of becomes much easier to brush away. So as you can see here, the water is just very gently getting rid of the clay, and that's a very good way of getting rid of all that clay without damaging your sculpture. Right, so there's the first half of my mould, and uh, it's looking pretty good. I can't see any obvious problems on the edge of the mould, so that's good. It means we won't have any obvious artefacts when we do our cast. So now what I've got to do is put the foam core wall back in place, glue it all back down, mix up some new silicon, and pour the second half of the mould.
So I've just simply poured the second half of my mold onto the existing half. The two bits of silicon are gonna to stick together. So what I'm using here is Vaseline to create a separating agent. So I'm just brushing that over the edges of the, of the rubber and that's gonna stop the second half of the mold sticking to it. So same process as before, mixing up my silicon, vacuum degassing it, then pouring it back in. So I'm now putting apart the mold and as you can see that's created quite a nice separation between the two halves. There we go, there's the second half of my mold and it's looking pretty good I think. This is always slightly nerve wracking, you don't always get to keep your sculpture so they often break in the mold but on this occasion it's actually, I think it's come out pretty much perfectly, there's hardly any damage to the sculpture at all so that's kind of handy. I've heard that you can only get about 50 casts out of a mold because the curing process of the resin can slowly damage it. So it's handy to have the original sculpture still because I can make a second mold if I need to. So the final stage here is I've built a basically a wooden caddy around the sculpture. This is just to hold it all in place and hold the two halves of the mold together. So what I can do is just screw it together, pour my casting resin in and uh, then I'll have my cast. So the other part of the sculpture that I didn't detail in the first video was that I've actually created a base for the sculpture and I thought a pillar of skulls would be quite a nice base for a, a zombie figure. So what I've done here is to create a bunch of monster clay skulls and I'm just sticking them onto a column. Now the way I've done that is to make a mould of some skulls that I've sculpted up and then I've melted some monster clay and poured the monster clay into the mould. So doing that means I can very quickly reproduce lots and lots of skulls and I don't have to sculpt up every single one. It's quite a useful uh, process actually, so I can sort of see myself maybe doing other types of sculptures in that way. Perhaps I could do a bunch of uh, writhing bodies by casting up separate uh, body parts and then putting them together. It might be quite a nice way of creating a sort of a repeating sculpture without too much work. Anyway, that's come out quite nice, so I need to make a mold of this as well. Um, so what I've decided to do is, um, I was having a problem finding mixing cups large enough. I could only ever find plastic plate glasses. So what I've settled on is these popcorn um, tubs, which are actually about 900 mil, so that's larger than a plate glass. And as it happens, that's almost exactly the right shape for a surround for my sculpture. So what I'm gonna do here is glue uh, one of these popcorn tubs around the sculpture. Um, as you can see, I've also extended the top here just so there's enough uh, space for the silicon to sit. And I'm gluing that down around the sculpture. I didn't make a two-piece mold for this one. I just poured the rubber in and I've cut it with a standing knife and giving it a wavy line just so it's easy to see how that meets up. Uh, and that's what the mold looks like. It's uh, quite an interesting shape actually because there's quite a lot of detail in there. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I hope this has been useful if you need to make moulds of your own sculptures. In the next video, I'm going to be casting these up. And I mentioned before that I've recently bought a pressure chamber, so I'm going to be having a go at pressure casting for the first time, uh, which is a technique that helps get rid of air bubbles in the mould. Anyway, that's for the next video, so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.